All right. Next up, number five, what are the technical progress slash blockers slash challenges with networking? Eric. All right. Well, so this is what I've been had my head completely in over the last month, really um, wrapping and working on this pro on, on getting networking rolling for us. So there's a bunch of things that are, are difficult and that are challenges. One of them is, um, is Rust as a programming language. Now, I wouldn't call this a blocker, but it's certainly a challenge. And the challenge is that as a programming language, what it makes you do is it makes you front load a lot of effort that other programming languages don't require you to do. And so it's a challenge because it takes time. And that front loading is that the Rust compiler is really, really picky and catches tons and tons of errors for you. And, and so it makes you do a lot of work and that's a challenge because we would like things to go more quickly. But what we realize is that that speed at the front end that it takes longer um, is reaped later because there are way fewer bugs. Um, so there's a thing called the asynchronous model in Rust, which means that you have to architect your code very carefully. And I'll get into that um, in the next thing that's a challenge for us, which is planning for large scale testing. So we know that Holochain is designed to work for um, at scale, millions of nodes. And what that means though, is that we have to be able to test um, in simulated mode and we need to be ready for when we're running at large scale, finding bugs and figuring out how, when things go wrong, why they're going wrong and how that's going. So one of the things we're adding into our networking um, module is this thing called tracing, which allows you to see where everything is going. Like one request that happens at the very top level by Holochain, it makes its way down into different components of the networking model. It makes its way into a networking request that goes out to another computer. And so there's a little ID that follows that request all the way through the chain and makes its way to another computer that is also, um, if it has tracing turned on, is recording that and allowing us to see the path of these requests from the top and all the way around. And you have to do stuff like that when you're creating um, this kind of complicated system. So planning for that and building that into our testing framework is complicated. It's a challenge to do. Another thing that's, re that's really complicated is what's called determinism. And this is the big problem in computer science. This is what Holochain and Ethereum and a bunch of these other, um, and, and blockchain it's, and blockchain solutions are all working around is how to handle the fact that there are different views of time. And when something happens in a different order, you have a different result. And so when you're testing things, you need to be able to um, record or see which order things did happen in so that if things don't work in one time sequence of events, you can find out why. How is it that your code didn't anticipate that time sequence of events? And so we're adding some really interesting things into our testing code, which creates um, random number seeds so that we can have things happen in a random order, but we know later what that order was so we can play it all back in the exact same order and find out what the bug was. Because otherwise it just happened in some random order and you didn't know. It's like forcing randomness in a way that you know using um, this, um, th this tool called um, pseudo random numbers. So that's been a fun thing to work on, but it's a challenge to get that right and to get all that code wrapped into your code so that you can run it during testing and then not run it when you're not doing testing. Um, these are technical things, right? This is a technical question, so I'm answering technical technical answer. Here's another one that's a, a technical as well as just a, a project management um, challenge, and that is staging. So all projects, when you're building them, you have to build parts that are simple versions of what you're going to replace with a more complicated version as you go, because you can't build it all at once. So that's just the nature of building software, right? So you create what are called mocks, you do simplified versions of things. So for example, one of the things that we have is we have in our networking module, we have um, uh, what we call in-memory networking. So instead of the signals going over the network, they actually stay inside the computer, but the, the calls, the, the code that it'd be sending a message through a WebSocket connection are made, they're exactly the same. They look the same to the calling code, but it just didn't go out to the internet, it stayed in memory. And, and so we have that, and we have to run that simultaneously and be able to switch that out with the WebSocket um, 
transport, memory um, networking transport. And, but that means that we had to write code that can handle multiple types of transports. So you create a greater level of abstraction, it takes more time, it's more co complex, it's a little bit harder to think about, but it's absolutely necessary in doing staging because of how long different parts take. A similar example to the networking one is the DHT. When we're doing our distributed hash table with full sharding and our full implementation, well, that's taking a while to build out and we're working on that. And at the same time, we have a mock version, which is a full sync DHT, where everybody on the, on the distributed hash table gets everything. And, but again, you have to have that be switchable and, and run in play. So those are some of the things that are challenging us, um, testing, determinism, staging, and how to, make, how to make it all play out as we build it. I'm very excited about our progress. Things are is, things are moving along quite well from where I'm sitting, but uh, so of course we would like them to be moving along more quickly. But that's the way it goes. So I hope that's a, a good answer. Gives some idea of some of the things we're facing. Yeah, thank you, Eric.